welcome to Furious Driving and today we're at the wheel of a 2021 third generation Kia Picanto, in this case a GT line. Now is this the model that proves that city cars don't have to be dull to drive? Watch and find out. And if you like reviews of new cars as well as interesting retro cars, then please do hit that subscribe button. And If you're looking for a car in the A segment, you have never been more spoilt for choice with quality offerings of things like the Fiat 500 Ford KA, Hyundai i10, Toyota Aigo, and of course this, the Kia Picanto. And if you're not a car nerd, the A segment means sub-city car, the smallest real cars that are on the road. And these days, saving on space does not mean you're saving on quality in terms of fit, finish, or equipment, or driving fun. Let's take a look around this GT line. Now the car is designed to be youthful and energetic feeling, apparently, and I reckon they've done a fairly good job on that. The car's design comes from a joint effort of Kia's design offices in South Korea and in Europe over in Germany. It definitely does save fun and energetic. It's got a great look, it's got a good personality in a small car. Now the blurb in the press release says they've tried not to make it busy or fussy, but there is still a lot going on in the front end of this car. It's got this full width grille, which I really do enjoy how this textured uh, metal strip underneath the grille area continues inside the headlamp clusters, which is a lovely bit of continuation design. And there's lots of detail in the headlamps themselves. All the headlights these days seem to be more and more interesting. It's almost a competition to find who can do the most exciting headlights. And even on this small car, they've done a great job. As well as the four individual running light elements, they've got like a mouth, a big fish mouth, containing the glowing ball of the headlamp um, projector. It's very anime sci-fi. You could almost imagine this headlight design coming out of Studio Ghibli. A theme we'll find inside the car as well is the horizontal split. So we've got the upper part and the lower part. And the lower part has got these interestingly designed fog lamp surrounds, which are almost an Art Deco sunburst, going back to these solid glass globes of fog light projector lenses. And being a GT line, we have got the interesting lower bumper and extra stuff happening. There are two top level cars. There's the X line and the GT line. Both have different takes on the same theme. This one though has a sporty performance vibe very strongly about it. Now here at the back of the car, in common to all the Picantos, we have these large C-shaped lamps which take up a lot of rear-end real estate and look pretty good as well. Uh, being the uh, GT line, we've got a few extra choice, nice, tasty bits. We've got this diffuser area down the back and these uh, pair of uh, pretend exhaust outlets which make it look incredibly sporty and perhaps a little more powerful than the 99 horsepower it actually has. And as well as that, on this level of car, we also get the tinted rear windows, the back windows, the side glass, and also back here below the badge, we have the lens of the reversing camera visible on the dashboard. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Now open up the boot, and you find lots of space. If you're in the business of moving washing machines and abducting people, it may be a little on the tight side. However, it is apparently best in class with 255 litres of space with the boot up, and 1,010 when these 60-40 split seats fold forward. That's plenty, however, it is quite a long drop from the lip down into there, but the chances are you're not going to be putting large heavy things in. It's mostly going to be shopping, maybe some dogs, which will clear that without too much difficulty. In fact, in the case of shopping, this could be an advantage. So looking under the carpet, we have got an inflaty wheel kit thing, which I do hate. Sorry, Kia, sorry, all the other manufacturers. This is a sucky idea. I know it saves weight, but it's terrible. But there is a pressing, so it looks like you can maybe spec an actual spare wheel. I'll flash on the screen if that's possible. Right, it's windy, let's get indoors. Ah, oh, right, it's nice to be out of the wind because it is blowing an absolute hoolie out there. It looks nice, but wow, it is windy. So let's take a look at the interior. Now, first of all, we have got these doors. This door card is a one-piece thing. It's a elephant hide effect plasticky thing. So it's not got soft touch leather and stuff in the main body of it. However, getting into the areas you do touch, you have a smooth finish black plastic down here. You have a soft touch faux leather, which carries on into the seats and the red detail highlight stitching, which looks rather nice. Let's put this door open again. Let's get this into the sunlight so you can see this. Being a GT line, we've got all the fun extras. We've got electric windows on all four doors. We've got the central locking lockout, electric mirrors, folding mirrors. Get you, get me even. Super swank folding mirrors. Another GT line rather fun item is this graduated red fade on the door. Very 1980s, very cool. And of course, being the top end spec car, we have got satin chrome finished door handles. The lower spec cars only get black. Uh, this is rather a nice touch here in the top end car. All the cars do though get a door pocket, which is big enough for various items in the bottom and a bottle holding area in the front. 
I'm not sure if all the trim levels get this, but certainly this one does, mid-range and tweeter up in the door. Moving into the dashboard, check out these vertical lozenge shaped air vents. Black gloss piano blacky type effect plastic, uh, faux metal in the center. It looks very cool, I'm, I'm a big fan of these. Now, as I mentioned at the front of the car, there is a theme of splitting levels in this car. So the dashboard as well as the front of the vehicle has a two stage, two height elements to it. So the top of the dashboard is your visual things that you need to look at and see and interact with on a frequent basis and the lower half is things you tend to ignore and not look at quite so much. So let's bring this binnacle to life with the ignition key and uh, it is a proper ignition key I'll say, not a push button a quick keyless entry malarkey thing. Looking down the barrel of the dials it brings to mind a high-end military grade uh, binoculars or something like that. Uh, big uh, rev counter on the left, big speedo on the right and interestingly I, when I looked at the Golf R the other day I noticed that the sub dials were inserted inside the main dials and this car does exactly the same thing. I also rather like the bright red needles which vanish to nothing when the ignition is off and then come back to life and glow bright red when the ignition is powered up. All very fun of course as with everything else these days big LCD information panel in the center. On top of that, we have a huge tea shelf. I'm gonna go buy some sandwiches from the petrol station in a minute, if I can get into the petrol station that is. And so I'll test the tea shelf ability of that. I suspect it will be a 10 out of 10. There is a slight slope, so maybe I'll drop it to a nine out of 10. Before I go into the screens, I'll take a moment to talk about the trim levels. There are 13 trim levels on this car, starting with one, two, three, and then going through other different name models. Right at the top of the tree, we've got the X-Line, which is a semi off road cross crossover looking thing, and this, the GT Line, which is the sporty version. Now, grade two and above get a 4.3 inch screen. However, the GT Line and the X-Line get an eight inch media center. It's a great big area of real estate here in the center of the dashboard and does all of your main things. It is equipped with Bluetooth enabled Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you don't even need to be plugging in your charging cable to hook the phone up and get your CarPlay working. Oh, here we go. I've been listening to Sandman. That was quite good. However, I don't believe it comes with built-in Santa. It relies on your CarPlay Android phone apps for navigation, which is becoming a more common theme. Uh, apparently they were only fitting SatNav for the used car market, but that may well become a thing of the past in the near future, who knows? Anyway, the rest of the design is nice and simple. It is a combination of touch screen and big buttons, but we've got the volume, we've got other tuning things on actual little nubbins, we've got big buttons that do stuff, which I like. And also that's repeated here on the steering wheel. So it's a lovely sporty leather steering wheel because it's the GT line, we've got the red contrast stitching, we've got the perforated leather. It's quite a small rim wheel with a flat bottom and uh, faux metal aluminium-y bits, which look great. Telephone and radio controls on one side, menu controls on the other, and airbag and horn here, horn test. <coughs> oh, cute. This whole area here is one lozenge shaped thing with the uh, elephant hide, uh, semi soft touch plastic, The faux metal strip through the center dividing everything and more faux metal bits on the air vents which all look very good below that we do have proper air vent controls i do not like on screen air vent controls much at all this is real so you can do your regular controlly stuff down further below we have got many little shelfy areas we've got a shelfy area above here you've got your usb a socket 180 watts which is quite a lot a large area here and then we have these incredibly curious uh, cup holders oh, i got in here in first and thought what are they playing at? They have not got any kind of restraint for your cup, but no, you have. You've got flippy pops. Flippy pops. If I revert, put this back again, you can see how the flippy pops work. Push the button. I may need to show this in slow motion. Flippy pop one. Flippy pop two. They rotate out. So if you want a big, large area for activities, room for activities down there, you got it. If you want cup holdage, cup holders from the flippy pops love it uh, room for activities on the buttons down here three unmarked ones don't know what they do uh, but you do have auto stop start off if you want it now a gearbox this is a five speed manual as standard in this car which is a good thing we do not like the advance of the automatics for the sake of it there is an automated manual available if you need an automatic for any reason and again we have got more red contrast stitching in the faux leather which is lovely which actually echoes into these seats which i haven't even mentioned i should uh, bring these into the equation these are very handsome indeed uh, it's 
black cloth on the lower levels and the GT line next line get the black flow leather and on the GT line you get the red contrast uh, panels as well which look really good very sporty very fun very interesting I like a bit of color and life coming into a car I would not be upset at all if they gave us all red seats with black highlights instead but uh, I'm gonna be happy with this and there's a uh, very interesting little pattern this is basically an optical illusion pattern where we've got the three little panels which make up a 3d image of a box repeated a million times into infinity so you can go absolutely insane in traffic looking at these seats and trying to work out where one box begins and the next one ends this is the shining in a seat then behind the gear shift if you've managed to retain your sanity there's room for items down here below the uh, handbrake a proper mechanical handbrake again i do not like electronic handbrakes so i'm loving this car more and more the more i use it then we've got a soft padded topped armrest which contains a cubby hole which goes down for miles i haven't even found the bottom of this yet i lowered a piece of string which is around 11 meters long there really i couldn't find it other stuff you might want to know the steering column is adjustable for height but not reach and the stalks contain many options for windscreen wiper control and uh, this is something i've not seen in a long time the headlights are on the left hand stalk fairly normal but so are the fog lights click once for front fogs click twice for both fogs now while the door aperture does sweep in pretty hard just here you can climb in nice and easy and even with the seat pushed back into my position and bear in mind i'm five foot eleven tall if you're in imperial in the measurements i've still got a decent amount of knee room it's not commodious but it's not uncomfortable either there's also generous amounts of headroom the roof line does roll around quite a long way so i've got like a full hand width of space between the top of the door and the uh and the roof so you do have to be aware of that as you climb in and don't brain yourself on that but we do have more of the uh insanity riven seat fabric pattern uh less of the red highlighting though just a little bit of red contrast stitching and only one map pocket in the back seats we do however have an awful lot of headroom i am comfortable in the head department if i bang this door shut I'm comfortable in the shoulder department as well. Um, just gonna show you that reversing around the corner camera quickly. I forgot to mention it when I was doing the uh, interior look, which makes it much easier to position this in the exact spot when you're parking it. So getting this car out on the road, you can really feel how light and really how nimble the thing is as well. It is a small car and it does not weigh a lot. So all the controls are extremely light. The power steering is actually an electrical system, or electronic system, which is mounted on the steering column itself, which uh, is obviously variable weight and means that at maneuvering speeds, it's more assisted and makes the car very, very simple and light and easy to, to get around a city street or to park in a tight spot. Now underneath the car, the Picanto was all new three years ago and that got independent suspension at the front using McPherson struts and a torsion beam at the rear and it was not long ago completely revamped so the wheels are sitting more closely aligned with the geometry of the suspension or which means it rolls more smoothly gets better economy and it's generally less wear and tear on the uh, on the components what that means inside the car is that it's an easy car to drive with uh, predictable handling high speed on the motorway it's nice and stable low speed through town it's comfortable and if you get some twisty bits you can actually have a little bit of a chuck it around the corners time and, uh, and have some fun with it so it's a city car that's not limited to the city but the pedals are seriously light underfoot so literally anyone can climb in and be fine with that the manual gear change is literally fingertip feather light you can flick through on a single finger and there you go it just drops in it's a little bit awkward on first sometimes you have to line it up just so uh, going to first gear occasionally now you might have heard that grumbling roar of an engine that is a three cylinder one liter that finds its way under the bonnet of everything in the range there's a couple of different power outputs however in this gt line it is 99 horsepower and apparently it will return an average mpg of 58 which is mightily impressive I have to say on a uh, long motorway journey the other day I was seeing an average of 55 and that was with quite a lot of equipment loaded into the boot 
Now the engines are a new smart stream three cylinder turbocharged direct injection petrol motor which are all Euro 6 compliant. Now in terms of safety there's good things happening as well. Uh, every car apart from the base model one gets a forward collision avoidance system as standard and it is optional on the model one as well so that's all good and 44% of the structure is high tensile steel so making it safer in an accident. Incidentally, you may have noticed this is a five door. That is the only option available these days. Apparently, that is what the customers are demanding. And you may notice this across the ranges of lots of other uh, small city sized cars that there's only now the five door option available. It's very easy to snick it through a corner, drop a gear and just go. It now sitting on a dual carriageway, 40 to 50 miles an hour, you could be in a car twice the size in terms of stability and road holding. It does happily grip and it clings on through corners, but what we don't have in this smaller body, which you would perhaps get in a larger car, is a level of sound deadening because the road noise from those little 16 inch wheels is actually quite loud. There are three different wheel sizes available and I'm sure more than that in terms of designs. 14, 15 or 16 inch. This being the GT line gets the best of everything. Performance is respectable, if not mind blowing, but it's only a city car. So let's not get carried away about performance. Although it is a city car that can do more. Let's not forget that as well. It's a very appealing package of an all-rounder, which is kind of like the Kia range as a whole at the moment. They do seem to be doing virtually everything rather well. Whether you want a city car like this, a big SUV, a saloon, an estate, there's something really for everyone. And the value and equipment and build quality seems to be pretty much flawless at the moment as well. You really can't go wrong with a Kia. It's perhaps not the strap line they'd be going for on their adverts, but gets where you're going with that. In terms of price, if you're looking at a GT line like this, then you are looking at around 15,800 on the road, a little more if you want to go for one of the premium level paints, which like this has got. But that does also get you a seven year, 100,000 mile warranty. Now visibility at this car is very impressive. We've got very tall windows, a low, belt line on the car so the greenhouse glass area is absolutely huge and it swoops away towards the front of the car as well so we've got big visual access to the mirrors big windscreen with a high roof line so everything really is very very clean clear and visible the only thing perhaps I don't like about it is the B post is a little far forward for me so sometimes if I look over my shoulder to do a, a blind spot check on the motorway then I'm looking at the B post rather than what's beside me or behind me that is a small niggle to make. So if I was going to start listing positives and negatives of the Picanto, positives are many. It's small on the outside, but lots of room on the inside. It feels extremely well made. And there's a very good level of equipment, especially on this trim level when you get the eight inch floating screen malarkey. The seats are comfortable and it's nimble handling. I could go on. In terms of things I don't like, there's really not so much. That B post thing is a bit of a, a niggle and there's not really a lot else to be perfectly honest. Cars in this class have no choice but to be very good these days. Competition is so fierce amongst them that everything drives well, everything is well made. So if you're gonna stand out in the A category sector, you've gotta be throwing in all the toys and all the quality. This is a fun car, it's good to drive. It makes you feel happy being in it. It could be a little bit brighter on the cockpit, but that goes for virtually everything on the market these days. Well, thanks for joining me today at the wheel of this rather pleasant little Kia Picanto. If you've enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join me again next time, driving something completely different. Mm -hmm.